Amen. But without any further ado, amen. Amen. Just taking note of the things that we have been speaking about lately. Amen. And a couple weeks back, um, we talked about repentance. Amen. And then after that, you know, um, God had us do it two weeks in a row. And we was lining up, we was lining up with the Jewish calendar and probably didn't even realize it. Amen. That they was going through their repentance. And then we and then we we heard the word about rejoicing. And Lauren had mentioned this, Minister Lauren had mentioned this in her message last week, amen, I mean, two weeks ago. And she said that God, because we repented, that God was ruling, was judging us, but he was judging us as he was ruling in our favor. Yes. Amen. <laughs> amen. Come on, somebody ought to agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. You ought to get excited. Yeah. Amen. And then last week, before I came, before on, on Saturday, I heard the Lord say, power in his presence. Amen. And then Bishop came and he preached, uh, Bishop Smith came, he was our guest speaker, and he preached about prayer and the power of his presence. Amen. Amen. So I'm seeing that God wants to do something today. And Lauren left us on a cliffhanger about receiving, that God wants us to receive. Amen. So, I wanted to talk to you today out of the book of Samuel, 1 Samuel, chapter number 1, verses 11 through 18. Amen. And we're going to ask if I'm going to have uh, Minister Daphne read it for me. Amen. Normally, I would have my son, I would have Chris read it for me, but he moved to South Carolina this week. Amen. He got down there successfully last night. Amen. 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 So, just so I can get the jitters out. <laughs> I usually have somebody read the words so I'm not stumbling over. 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 11 through 18. Amen. And the word of the Lord reads, And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou will indeed look on the affliction of thine handmaid and remember me and not forget thine handmaid, but will give unto thine handmaid a man child, then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life. Yes. And there shall no razor come upon his head. And it came to pass as she continued praying before the Lord, that Eli marked her mouth. Now Hannah, she spake in her heart, only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore Eli thought she had been drunken. And Eli said unto her, How long wilt thou be drunken? Put away thy wine from thee. And Hannah answered and said, No, my Lord. I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. Count not thine handmaid for a daughter of Belial, for out of the abundance of my complaint and grief have I spoken hitherto. Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace. And the God of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked of him. And she said, Let thine handmaid find grace in thy sight. So the woman went her way and did eat, and her countenance was no more sad. Amen. Yes. I want to speak to you from a subject today of asking, believing, and receiving. Amen. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you, Lord, for this day and this moment, God. And Lord, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for your mercy, God. And we thank you, Lord, for what you've been doing amongst here in Morningstar. We give your name the praise, the honor, 
and the glory today, Lord. Lord, we ask you to have your way, Lord. Bless every ear to hear, Lord, that the word, Lord, will land on a tender heart, God, in the name of Jesus. That they would receive the word of God that you have for them. Lord, use me today, Lord, as I decrease that you would increase within me. Lord, that you would get all the glory, God, and that my flesh would step aside, Lord, in Jesus' name. That I would speak as a messenger, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So we see here in the book of Samuel, the first chapter is about a woman by the name of Hannah. And at that time, Hannah was, Hannah was, um, Hannah had a husband, but her husband had two wives and Hannah was one of them. But Hannah was not able to give birth. So her womb, the Bible says that God had shut up her womb. So she was not able to give birth. Amen? And uh, the other wife was able to give birth. But here, Hannah was, was bound. And when you, and, and in that day, you know, one, one of the reasons why they had two wives, it wasn't, God was never for that, but they, but they would have two wives because they, was, they would want, to, the men wanted to birth as many sons as possible. Because Men, the, the young men would die so often in wars and different things like that. So, so they would, so they would have two wives, so they could have more sons. Amen. Amen. But if you was not able to produce as a woman, it was a disgrace to the husband and also to the woman. And many times, the the the, the husband would put away the wife, but yet Hannah's husband loved her, and he didn't give up on her. But she was, but she was, you know, she was, she was so sad in her spirit. And sometimes we don't understand why we're going through certain things and certain seasons and certain times. But God had a reason why He shut up her womb, because uh, uh, when, to make a long story short, in the end she dedicated her son to God when she had, when she finally had a son. But if she would have had a son beforehand, she would have never had dedicated that son to God. Sometimes you got to go through different tests and different trials, and sometimes you got to go through different things so God can wheel and deal with you and get you to line up properly. Yes. Amen. So here she is, that she is here, and she's praying, and she's in the temple, and she's beginning to, to intercede, and she's praying, and then the priest can see her praying, and he can see that her mouth is moving, and there's no words coming out. Amen. And sometimes, you know, we may look crazy when we're going to church and we're pressing our way and we may look crazy at times and we might not, but everybody else might not understand, but you're trying to get a breakthrough from God. So she was trying to get a breakthrough. She was trying to, uh, 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 to get a breakthrough from God. But then the, the prophet sees her and says, you must be drunk. And some people may think that you're crazy, but you got to keep pressing in God. So he's seen her. And he said, she said, no, I'm not drunk. She said, my, my spirit is sorrowful, but, I, I, but I'm, I'm, I'm asking God to bless me with a son. And then when he said that, when she said that, he said, well, be it unto you. And he blessed her that she would be able to bring forth the son. But before she was able to bring forth the son, once she received that word, once she received what she well, uh, 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 what God had said, her continence changed. Right there at that time, she believed. Mm -hmm. And you cannot receive unless you believe. Yeah. At that time, she received. And then the Bible says that she brought forth a son and she hold on to her vow and she dedicated her son to God. And he became one of the greatest prophets in the Bible. The Bible says that Samuel, that none of his words fell to the ground. Amen. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So we also, when we pray, when we see the story, we see that she did all three things. She asked God. And sometimes we gotta learn how to ask God for what God wants to give us. We gotta ask God. You gotta make your petitions known. Yes. And then she believed, and then she received. 
oftentimes we get stuck at just asking God. We get stuck at just asking God for a blessing, but we really don't believe what we ask for. The Bible says to believe what you pray for. Believe what you ask God for. If you don't believe what you say, then you will not receive. Amen. Amen. I hope somebody gets a hold of this today. I hope somebody gets a hold of this today. Amen. Because every time that you begin to talk about prayer, every time you even try to go into prayer, the enemy always, always will bring distractions. The enemy will always cause you not to go to prayer, not to get into prayer, yeah. not to get your mind right. The enemy will always send distractions. So I hope that you receive this word on today. Yeah. Amen. Because God wants you to be blessed. God wants you to receive something that you've been waiting for. Yeah. Amen. But when, when we pray, we must begin to pray within the will of God. Yeah. And sometimes when we say, Lord, have your way, some people think that that's giving up, but that's not giving up. Yeah. Amen. When you say, Lord, have your way, the thing is, God wants to give you exceedingly, abundantly above more than you can ask or think. Yes. Amen. So what your idea was, Lord, bless me with $1,000, God wants to give you $100,000. Right. Amen. Bless me, Lord Jesus, with, with healing. God wants to not only heal you, but he wants to make your body whole, make your whole spirit and soul whole so that God can use you. Amen. When you ask God for his will, God is going to do greater than what you can think of. Amen. And oftentimes we think that we can't, you know, we can't approach God or we can't go to God or we can't ask God for things. And we feel like that we're going to get beat up. But God does not want, God wants us to ask. God is waiting for you to ask. God wants to bless you. Yes. Just like when you've seen the prodigal son. And the prodigal son, he went out and he, he did his thing and he sinned and he went out and, and, and lost all his inheritance. But when he came back, when, when he was going his way back, he said, I'm going to go back, but I'm just going to be like one of the hired servants in my dad's house. Because I was sinned, I did all these things, I made the family look bad. But soon as he came back, the father seen him from afar off. And he went and he ran to him, put a ring on his finger, put a coat on him, and he said, get the fatted calf and let's celebrate that my son has returned. God is waiting for you to come back. God is waiting for you to ask. God is waiting to touch you. But you got to realize that you have to surrender to the Lord and realize that God wants to bless you. Yes. Amen. 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 Even when Jesus prayed in the garden, he said, nevertheless, not my will, but let your will be done. You got to pray that you get in line with God's will. Yes. Amen. Even in the Lord's Prayer, he talks about the will. Amen. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We have to get in line with his will. And the thing is that when you get in line and say with God's will, then your desires will become God's will. It says he'll give you the desires of your heart. You'll begin to desire the things that God wants for you. Yeah. You yeah. begin to desire the things that God wants to give you. Yeah. You begin to desire the breakthroughs that God wants to give you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Father. Amen. Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 through 11. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be open unto you. For everyone, come on, somebody say everyone. everyone. For everyone that asketh, receive it. Yes. And he that seeketh, findeth. Yes. To him that knocketh, it shall be open. Yes. When you ask, you, are, you will receive. Notice the different language from verse 7 to 8. When verse 8 is saying, ask it. So you continue to ask, and he'll continue to bless you. Yes. Amen. Yes. When you continue to, to seek it, you'll continue to find. Yes. you got to continue to seek after God. you got to continue to ask God. you got to continue on knocking at the door, and he will open the door. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. 
Or what man is there of you whom if his son asked for uh, ask bread will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, he will give him a serpent. If ye then being evil know that know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him? God wants to give you a blessing. God wants to give you gifts. God wants to fulfill the dreams that you have. Amen. God wants to fulfill those dreams and ministries that you have, those dreams in your finances, those things in your marriage that you're going through, those sicknesses in your body. God wants to bless you, but you have to ask. Yes. You have to ask him. Thank you, Jesus. Mark chapter 11, verse 23 and 24. And verily... I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be cast into the sea and, and, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that these things which he saith shall come to pass. And he shall have whatsoever things he saith. Notice in the verse. Now, before this verse, this was talking about the time when Jesus was walking through and he cursed the fig tree. And when he cursed the fig tree, then he came, he went into the temple, and then the next day when they seen the fig tree, the fig tree had dried up. And they was all in amazement. So here he tells them that you can do the same thing. But the key that he says that, and be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in your heart. Yes. When you pray, you can't have any doubt. When you pray, you can't have any doubt. If you believe, it's right here in the word. How many of you believe the word of God? I Amen. Amen. So the word says, if you believe and do not doubt in your heart, but shall believe the things which you pray for. God wants to bless you, saints. Yes. God wants to bless us, but you first have to believe and not doubt. Yes, that's yes. right. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And you gotta know, just like that fig tree, when he when he rebuked it, sometimes when you pray for something, you might not see the change right away. Huh? Sometimes you might not see the change coming. Huh? Sometimes you might not see something shifting, but you have to know that he rebuked that fig tree. Huh? But down in those roots, huh, those roots begin to dry up. Huh? Those roots begin to change. Huh? And you, when you uh, uh, begin to pray, you gotta realize that God is working on your behalf. Huh? You gotta realize that God is warring for you. Huh? You gotta realize that God is tearing down some strongholds. Huh? You gotta realize that God is doing something for you. Huh? Hallelujah. Huh? So as he begin to say that. Huh? They begin to dry up. Huh? When you begin to pray, huh? if you believe, huh? the enemy has to back up off your finances. Huh? The enemy has to back up off your sicknesses. Huh? Yes. The enemy has to back up huh? off your loved ones huh? that you're yes. waiting to be saved. Huh? The enemy has to back up huh? off that situation waiting for a job. Huh? Yes. The enemy has to back up. Huh? But if you have no doubt in your heart, huh? the enemy will have to flee if you but believe. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You have to believe. Therefore, I say unto you, what, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. So when God gives you a desire, when you're in his will and God gives you a desire and you begin to pray, believe that you have them. Know that God heard you. God knows the hairs that are numbered on your head. God knows when your life started, when it will end. God knows everything. Yes. Amen. Yes, he does. Verse 25, and when ye stand praying, forgive. If you have ought against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you, may forgive your trespasses. Yes. So listen, if you got some beef with somebody, it's not worth it 
for you to have all that stuff in your heart that your prayers won't be answered. That's right. If you got all these problems with somebody, it ain't worth it because you're not going to get the blessings that you receive because you can't ask for mercy, ask for blessings, but can't give it. You got to be able to give mercy in order to receive it. Amen. Amen. And you see so many people nowadays, and, we're, and with the social media world, there's so many people that don't have mercy, and there's so many people tearing down their own brothers and sisters in Christ. Tearing the church down. There's a bunch of trash out there. Amen. Don't take part in that. That is an evil spirit. All that criticism, all that stuff. That is not what the church, that is not, Christ didn't say, you see somebody criticize them and tear them down. He didn't say do that. That's right. If they're in error, you pray for them. And then you build them back up. Amen. That's the word. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. So forgive those old grudges that you had. Let it go. Let it go that she would be blessed. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank Let you it go. Lord. So God wants us to pray, and God wants us to receive the blessings that he has for us. Amen. God wants us to receive. And then when you pray for something, when you pray for something, don't curse the thing that you just prayed for. Don't curse the things that you just prayed for. You're saying you need a job, you need your financial situation, but you're like, oh, Lord, I can't, I can't work like that. I can't do that. I can't change that. You know, I can't learn this. I can't go to school for that. I can't do that. And you're cursing your situation. You're asking God for healing, but then you're cursing your situation and you're giving glory to how big your sickness is. You're cursing your situation, calling yourself different things, calling yourself ugly or old or broke and then you expect to find a spouse. You can't cur you can't pray about something and then curse yourself. Don't curse yourself. But learn how to take your prayer and wrap it with prophecy. That's right. Learn how to take your prayer and begin to take another stance and speak over your prayer and begin to prophesy over the thing that you prayed about. Begin to prophesy over your finances. Begin to prophesy about the job that you're going to have, the house he's going to bless you with. Begin to prophesy about the spouse that's coming. Begin to prophesy about the healing, about what you're going to do when you're healed. Begin to prophesy about those things and wrap it with prophecy. And then take your faith and line it up with the word of God. Because the Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Yes. Amen. 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 Because you got to protect your faith. Yes, you do. You got to protect your faith. Because the enemy is going to try to come against it. The enemy is going to tell you, look, I don't see any changes. You don't see any changes. You really believe that? You really believe that? So as soon as you pray it, the enemy's going to come. How did Jesus fight the enemy? With the word of God. You got to fight the enemy with the word. That's why you got to be in your word. I challenge everybody this week take your situation, the things that you're praying for, and seek it out in the word of God. You need help? Ask somebody. Seek it out in the word of God. And when you begin to pray, pray with the word of God. Yes. Yes. Colossians 4 and 2 says. Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. Watch and pray. Watch the enemy be defeated. Amen. Watch the things begin to change. But you got to be patient. And watch that you don't be deceived. Amen. But also, lace that, lace your prayer and the things that you're waiting on God with. While you're waiting, give God thanksgiving and praise. Because there's power inside your praise. Amen. In Philippians 4 and 6, be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto God. Let your requests be made known unto God. Yes. Ask, and it shall be given. Yes. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and the door shall be opened. Yes. Amen. When you pray, quote that scripture. 
Begin to quote it. Because God said that he would answer your prayer. And some of us become lazy and don't want to pray. And some of us don't believe that the prayer is not going to work. So, well, I'm not going to waste my time. It's not going to work. But prayer does work. Prayer does change things. Yes, yes. That's right, God. Prayer does change things. Yes. Amen. I'm a witness that prayer changes things. Yes. And then you know what? The enemy will lie to you and say, well, he never answered any of your prayers. And the devil is a liar. He will steal those thoughts out your mind, the things that you prayed for, the things that he answered, and he will try to take it and say, well, he never answered any of my prayer. The devil is a liar. Yeah. We're standing here today because he made a way. Yes. Because he made a way. Because. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. John, 20, John 16, 23, my last description. And in that day, ye shall ask me nothing. Verily, 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 I say unto you, whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, in my name, he will give it you. Amen. Ask in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says he has given him a name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. That's what the scripture says. It's a mighty name. Yes. It's a great name. There's victory when you call on the name. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Call on the name of the Lord. Call on the name of Jesus. 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 And let God complete the work in you and finish it in you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's give God a praise. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I want to ask if everybody would stand as we just close this with the word of prayer. Lord, we thank you this day, God. Lord, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for your word. And Lord, we thank you, Lord Jesus, as we ask and as we believe and as we receive, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, some are believing, Lord, for a lot of different things. Some are believing for healing. Lord, in the name of Jesus, some are believing, Lord Jesus, for breakthroughs in finances. Some are believing for breakthroughs in their marriage, Lord. We speak it now, Lord Jesus, that the petition that have been prayed, God, let it be unto them in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Receive it. In the name of Jesus. Hey, no, no, my son. Hey, no, 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 my son. Lord, I'm praying that somebody does not miss this today, God. Only because their breakthrough is here, God. The time is now that God wants to pour out a blessing in this season. Believe the things that you prayed for and receive it. Receive it today in Jesus' name. Amen.